Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Well, we had a question on one of our other videos. We've got this sort of blue section here and somebody was actually asking how I created that. It's very easy to do with Divi. They've got some fantastic background options. So I'm gonna cover a few of those today and I'll re rebuild this little section that I've got going on here. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the visual builder. OK, well, let's roll down the page and add a new section. Little blue button to add a new section. I'm going to make mine a regular section. Inside, I'll throw any two modules in there. I'm just going to put something in there so you can see what's going on. Let's put a call to action on the left there. And we'll just throw a contact form in on the right. I'm going to leave that just as it is for the minute. OK, well, let's go into this section there, blue tab for a section, and we'll start playing with some of the background options. And if we go in there to the background, which is always under the content tab, first one we see is color. And obviously you can make your background any color you want. Now, with these background colors, you can also have a hover effect so you can actually make it change when somebody puts their mouse on it. And this is common to all Divi modules. If you actually hover over the dark writing within a module, that's the only one in here, you'll see some little icons appear. If there's a little arrow, you can set a hover state. Desktop state is when the mouse is not on it. Hover state, funnily enough, is when the mouse is on it. So when they put their mouse on it, you can perhaps say, Let's turn that to blue or whatever color it is you want. So now when they hover over it, it'll change to blue. Next up, we've got gradient. And they've got some fantastic options here. They've just upped their gradient game. If I just add one, there's one that puts it in by default there. You can actually add as many stops and different colors as you want here. To add a stop, just simply left click and it'll put a little stop there for you. Click on it again to add your new color. And you can do as many stops as you want here and make it crazy if you want to. And in the middle, let's put a white one in the middle perhaps. And you can move these have more or less of one color or the other color like that and like I say you can have as many as you want you've got linear you've got circular elliptical conical if I put this back on linear you can change the direction spin it around however you want you can repeat your gradients you can use percentages if you want so that it looks different on different screen sizes. You can place the gradient above a background images and we'll be looking at background images in a minute. So you've got some fantastic options there with the gradient as well. Let's just take that away so it'll go back to our color that we had there. Next up, we've got image. And image backgrounds are fantastic. They're always good to see on websites. If we just add an image, I'm gonna put something fairly deep on there. When I say deep, I mean portrait style that's quite that's longer than it is wide. Let's just pop this one in there. As you can see, that's popped that in there. And what we're looking at is the sort of top part of that picture. You can, if we roll down a little bit, you can align it how you want. At the moment, it's covering. You can make it fit. As you can see, it's just fitting it to the height of our actual section there. You've got actual size, which will be the actual size of the image resolution that you've got up there. You can stretch to fill if it's not wide enough. That's going to take its aspect ratio kind of crazy. And you can create your own custom size if you want to, width and height wise. I'm going to leave mine on cover at the moment. Just down below, you can decide whether you want to see the center, the top, top left, where you want your image to actually start. Top center. 
think we had ours on center center. There we are. That works for me. Okay, I'm going to come back to background image blend in a minute. But first I'm going to show you the parallax effect. And the parallax means move two things moving at different rates. And we've got two different versions. If I switch this on, roll down a bit so you can see, we've got true parallax here. And if I roll up and down, you'll see that the background image there is moving at a different rate than our site. And that's a great effect. You see that on a lot of websites at the moment. If I do it a bit more smoothly with my fader over here. Now they've got another version, which they call CSS Parallax. It's also known as fixed background. And what's going to happen now is that background image is going to stay exactly where it is when we roll up and down the site. So let's roll up and down again. And you can see that image stays exactly where it is. And that's really dramatic. And parallax is a great thing to use on your site. That's going to get people's attention quickly. Okay, I'm going to turn the parallax off now. And we're going to go back down. Background image blend. Now remember, we've got a purple color in the background. And what we're going to be able to do with this is blend it with our actual image here. And this is fantastic for making things stand out over images that are quite busy. And this is a pretty busy image here. So let's have a look. I'm going to put on multiply. Remember we've got a purple is the color that it's multiplying it with. And you can do this with the gradients as well. As you can see, that's added the purple to it. But you can get some fantastic effects with these. I'll just roll through a few. Screen. Overlay. And remember, it's just working with that purple color there. Color dodge. Color burn. You get the idea, and there's some fantastic ones. Exclusion and luminosity I use quite often on images. So that gives you a lot of options right there. Okay, let's move on. Next up, I'm going to actually put this back on multiply. Next one along, we've got a background video. Here you can add a background MP4 video and have it playing. Let's grab a little background video. I'm going to go to a site called pexels.com and I want to look for videos. Let's, well, let's do oceans. That'll look quite nice. And you can roll over it. It'll give you an example. Let's get something a little more dramatic. Yeah, let's do this one. So I'm going to download this one. There's my MP4 down there. Let's go back to our site. I'm going to add a background video. Simply going to drag my video up here. Hit the upload video button. And there's our video. It may stagger a bit because I'm using screen recording software for my video here. But there's the idea. Now, if you're using a your video, it's not a bad idea to have an image in the background as well. That way something will show up if it takes a bit of time to load the video. Okay, well I'm going to delete that. Just thought I'd show you how to use a video. Alright, well let's go on. And we've got background patterns right here. Let's actually put some polka dots in there. You can't really see them. If I click on here we can choose something else. Like some little random shapes here. And let's roll on down. I've got confetti. If I make them white. There they are in the background there. And again, you can combine these with images and colors as we're doing here. Now you can flip it around the other way if you want to. I'm quite happy with mine the way it was. It doesn't make much difference with it. You can rotate it there. You can actually invert it so that the actual pattern's got the color background. And we've just got a white image in front. Change the color there if you want to. I'm going to leave it just like that. Of course, you can make it different sizes, which is great. Cover, fit, stretch to fill. I like to use a custom size. That way you can start off real small and just bring it up to whatever size that you want it. That's nice. It may be a bit too much in your face. If so, click on the color. And with this variegated slider over here, we can bring the opacity down so it fades in the background a little bit more. 
little more subtle but still there. And you've got horizontal and vertical offsets and repeats and things like that. That's a great little feature. Great. Well, let's move on. The last thing that we've got here are masks. And again, you've got a few shapes to choose from here. And you simply click on it, choose the shape that you like the look of. And it's in there. And you can manipulate it somewhat by changing the color over here. And again, you've got an opacity slider if you want to see more of your image behind and have different effects going on like that. You can transform it the other way around if you want to, just as we did with our patterns. And you can reverse it as well. So you can get some great little features going on with that. So with backgrounds, you really do have a lot of options. So I'm going to take most of these away and they wanted to know how I built that little blue section. That's how we started this video off. So let's take the image away. Don't need a mask. We'll need a pattern, but I'll take it away for the moment and I'll start from scratch with this one and it'll take just a couple of minutes. I'll take the color away. Okay, I'm going to start off with a gradient to get the effect that we had before. I'm going to have black on both ends. It's going to look really exciting at first. There it is. It's all black now. Right in the middle, around about 50%. I'm going to put a blue. There it is right there. I'm going to pull these in a bit so the blue stands out a little bit more in the center. Maybe about 25%. Obviously work with whatever it is you've got going on. So it almost gives it a sort of tubular glow effect. I think maybe I didn't have it quite as dark as that. Okay, so we started off with something like that. And then I simply added a pattern to the background. Background pattern. And the one I used, I believe, was this one right here. And I made it white and I made it a lot smaller. So it was almost like a mesh, something like that. And then I took the opacity down by clicking on the color until it sort of faded into the background. And we had that sort of mesh effect going on there. And simply save it. And there it is. I guess I could have answered that question in a minute, but I thought I'd take you through all the background effects there. So I think that's what you were looking for right there. Let's just save the changes and we'll compare it to our other one. And let's exit the visual builder. We're going to roll on down. There's a section we created. And where's the one that they were after? They were after this one. It looks like I used a bit of a lighter blue there and perhaps a blue on the top rather than a black there. But you get the idea. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. Don't forget if you have any questions, put them below the video and I'll do my best to answer them or make a demo video for you. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day day.